ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash B-C-C. ZocDoc.com slash B-C-C. Welcome to the chain. This is the BCC Club where your host, Kendall Landreth. And I'm Sarah Schauer. And what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about crazy job listings. Yes. More so like getting hired post-pandemic, you know, the quote-unquote job shortage as ha- you have it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Exactly. So we're going to be talking about that. Looking at some weird job listings. We, most of, honestly, just so many jobs, you need so much. Mm-hmm experience in a way that is so nuts where it's like how are people getting this experience yeah this is an entry-level job and they want you to have six years of experience it doesn't make any sense no seriously or there's like ceos who have been working there for 30 years and they need help opening like a pdf (laughs) and so you're like actually how how does this work yes yeah um but before we get into that how was your week it's good um i moved i'm in I, i i feel like a dick saying this but i need to okay so I'm in the Beverly Hills area now. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And I wanted to tell you this. Um, so I do smoke cigarettes. And people in Beverly Hills are crazy. Yeah. Like they're, um, I went outside with a friend outside my apartment to smoke a cigarette. And this lady from across the street, literally 100 feet away, she walks out of her apartment. And she's like, you guys can't smoke standing still. And I was like, what? What? And she's Whoa. like, she's like, you need to be walking if you want to smoke because it wafts into people's homes. And I was like, this is BS. So I go on my phone and literally there's like an ordinance it, as of this year. You have to, to legally smoke in public in Beverly Hills. You have to be walking on a sidewalk. Whoa. Like not just anywhere. You have to be moving on a sidewalk. To smoke a cigarette. Wow. Did you have a panicked moment where you were like, I've made a grave mistake? I was like, I, no, I'm, or more than anything, I was like, so how are they going to ticket me? Like, I, I, walk in a, I could walk yeah. in a circle as long as I'm walking on the sidewalk. I mean, I think people literally in neighborhoods like that have so much time. To do, yeah. And so they, I think, literally will call the police on you. Oh, yeah. For that. That's and then we'll, they'll just come and be like, you have to walk. Like, it's such an insane yeah. type of neighborhood. It is. But, I mean, that's my only complaint. I was more trying to go for the WeHo area. And as it goes, they intersect. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah, whole yeah. thing. But, yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll have positives. And I'm sure your apartment oh, yeah, looks incredible. There's, there's, really, there's really nice positives. But it was just it was just a weird thing. Because I was like, this lady's totally being a Karen. And yeah. she's, uh, if anything, she's watching my back. She yeah. was like, hey, dude, I just want to let you know they're serious about this. Yeah, but, but truly, I mean, that's like I can never live in a neighborhood. Some neighborhoods, it's like you can't leave your bike out. Yeah. You can't, you're, you're, they're really, like, serious about uh, the types of decorations you have and yeah. that if your flowers are taken care It's just like, ugh, I can never live in a place like that. No, seriously. It's so stressful. It was weird. But also, the week has been good. I've been decorating. Um Pretty much that. We were just talking about color matching because I was uh, color matching Kendall. Kendall, yeah. we okay, so this is how you do real quick. If you want to, and you're pale, and you're like, do I have warm or cool undertones? Check your wrist. If, you're the, if your veins look green, then you're a warm undertone. That's what mine are. If they're more blue, purple, you're cool. And you're cool. I am cool. And you are <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I'm not cool. <laughs> and then if you're like, I don't know, dude... You should pay for a service. But that's like the the easy kind of... That's so interesting. Do you know why that is? Well, because if you, it turns green, it means that your skin has more yellow because your veins are blue. Oh, duh. That's just... In my head, I was like, my blood is green. No. no obviously, that's not what's happening. Your skin is more yellow. That's fascinating. Which is a warm tone. That's so interesting. Okay, yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm having a little, um, you know, a, a fashion and... Who am I uh, transitioning point? So I was like, I'm getting extensions. That's yeah. where this all started. I'm getting hair extensions and on the 2nd of October. Mm-hmm. And I also am buying some new clothes. So I yeah. was like, I got to know. I got to know. I think I would have guessed I was cool based on literally nothing. Other uh-huh. than that maybe I like uh, cool 
I like maybe I want to be cool. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I would have guessed I was cool, and it's good to know I'm not. No, yeah. So I have a light pink water bottle, and then my um, my wallet is a warm pink. And when I held up the light pink versus the warm pink to yeah. your face, the light pink, which is a cooler pink, did wash you out a bit. Yeah. And I will say, I actually think you are warm because your hair, your blonde is a warm blonde. And if it was ashy, I would feel like it would wash you out. And yeah. ashy is cooler. Yeah. You, usually. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you are a worm. Yeah, I think so. You're I think on the right, right path. Well, my hairstylist the other day, because I was like, they, they, she was like, well, what what do you want the color of your extensions to be? And I was like, honestly, uh-huh. I do not care. Like, I, get, I mean, in the blonde arena, because I yeah. don't want to have a full transformation. But I was like, in the blonde arena, but I do not know what would look good on me at all. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I think a worm. I, they would. They said, "I like you in warm." No, yeah. So I think that we're right on the money. You should get a warm blonde. Also, the, I was telling Kendall this. A lot of people think, especially very pale white people, think since you have like pink undertones, that means that you're a warm. Not necessarily. It doesn't matter if it's like the the it's you, the difference between being flushed versus like the actual undertone of your skin mm-hmm. tone. So you just gotta be aware of that, guys. But um, yeah, That's I good think to know. your hair color as it is now help, like accentuates your features. Mm-hmm. And like, I think if you went any ashier, if you went any cooler, it look you look kind of sick. Yeah. So I think you should stay in that. Yeah, realm. in this realm. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. I feel I'm nervous about the extensions, but I think it's gonna be good. I'm excited. I think that you'll do great because like <sighs> you like you said you were low maintenance, but this is just like six weeks of checkup, you know. And you, how often yeah. do you wash your hair? I okay. This is what I'm a little nervous about. I wash my hair a lot. Uh-huh. My hair gets really greasy. Yeah. No, what I will say is I do not do any, like, dry shampoo, like, any of that. I'm just, like, once my hair's greasy, I'm, like, I have to shower. I shower every day, but then I wash my hair probably every other day, Mm -hmm. um, which is too much. But it does get really greasy really fast. Yeah. So I'm a little worried about that. So I think I'm going to have to get to know some products a little more. Yeah. um, I would recommend definitely looking to dry shampoos. Just because the extension, since it's not connected to your head, it does not collect oil like your normal hair does. Mm. So it's a lot drier. So you're essentially like washing dry hair, like super dry hair every day. So um, if you're going to wash it more frequently, just put like get like a nice oil mask or a nice mask. Yeah. I use the Moroccan oil. oil oh, good to know. OK. And like I have extensions and I wash my hair quite frequently. But yeah. Yeah. OK. All right. Next time you see me, I'm going to have long hair. Exactly. Like Actually, or, that might not be true. I they're going to listen dates, and be like, Kendall has long hair now. <laughs> You'll be able to tell with my my energy. I'm going to mm-hmm. be a lot meaner. No, yeah, when I got extensions, my hair was, I got it mainly for fullness because my hair is very thin. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I have a lot, like you said, like I have a lot of, a lot of fine hair. Yeah. So it's just, uh, but I, it just helped like look fuller and yeah. I, I look like an adult. Yeah. You know, like I don't, there's something about very thin hair. Sorry guys. Very thin hair where you kind of look like immature. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I yeah, totally yeah. get that. Um, and my hairdresser has a job uh-huh. <laughs> just being, <laughs> yes just being my hairdresser um and i assume others Wait, no, how was your week it was good i just i talked about getting hair extensions i know but that's coming up that's not what let's happened. see what did i do this well i've been sick mm-hmm. we had to cancel recording last week i had a really bad flu so that was terrible um and my dog was sick too so i had to take her to the vet can dogs get the flu no, she didn't have the flu, but her eye, she wasn't sick as too much, but her eyes were doing a really weird, they were like bloodshot red. Yeah. And also like stuff was coming out of them. Uh, and it was gross. And she seemed a little lower energy. Once again, if she spoke English, I would just be like, you good? And I'm sure she would have been like, I'm totally fine. Yeah. But I just get nervous. So I took her to the vet and um, I, and she's fine. <laughs> that was the, uh, so that was what they decided. She's literally fully fine. But <clears throat> I was sick. And I watched, um, what did I do while I was sick? I like watched a lot of lesbian movies. I was going to say, I saw a TikTok about Yellow Jackets, so I figured you were still on that. Oh, I finished Yellow Jackets. Yeah. And then I started watching, I just watched a couple movies. Yeah. Which I really, I'm not really a movie gal. Same. But I I go see movies in theaters a lot, Uh because my girlfriend loves going to the movie theater, but I don't like, I watch, I'm a TV watcher, but I watched this movie called... Damn it, what was it called? I, I don't remember what it's called, but I think oh, I'll just tell you what it's about. It was about these like two people, two women uh-huh. from like way back in the day, like milk and cows on the farm, cars don't exist yet yeah. back in the day. The 70s. 
Uh, it was the 70s. <laughs> yeah. And they live on a, you know, they live in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And they're each other's quote unquote neighbors, even though they live like still probably like a mile from one another. Yeah. And they both have husbands and they they fall in love. Oh, nice. And it was actually really, it was really nice. And then I watched one called Summerland. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? No. It's about, I think it takes place, I haven't seen it in a week, so of course I hardly remember a single thing about it, but it was about a woman who during the 30s, I believe, uh, had, they basically brought a boy to her doorstep and was like, you need to take care of him <laughs> because yeah. he's like, doesn't have a home right now because of the war and because of whatever. And she's like not maternal and it's like, uh, no, I do not want to do this. So her and this boy kind of become friends um, more than like a parent-child relationship, but she is secretly gay and oh, wow. that's the tea on yeah. her. So I watched that. So I watched a lot of movies. It was nice. It actually was nice because I think I'm always kind of sick because I have lupus. Yeah. And so I feel a lot of like frustration because I feel like I'm always kind of sick, but not sick enough to like take a day off. Oh, yeah. So I'm always just like working through being sick. And sometimes I'm like, oh, it is nice when you're just really sick, like yeah. so sick to where it's like, I can't work. Like I oh, literally yeah, yeah. can't work. I'm so sick. I'm like, can't even like sleep through the night because I'm so sick. Obviously that sucks, but it is nice to be like, I'm not working for yeah. three days. Yeah. It, so that was nice. <laughs> no, exactly. I, um, it is really nice when you're finally just consumed by the pain <laughs> as opposed to like micro dosing it. Yeah. Like I... Like, we've talked about this. Like, sometimes, like, I thought I was tired, but I realized my lower back hurts. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I feel, like, lazy now. I'm in pain, but, like, it's making me tired. I wish yes, it, I yes. was just, like, broke a bone. And then you're like, yeah, it makes sense then for I me feel to take good a day off down. work. Yeah. Yes, because I'm always just, like, pushing through pain. Yeah. Which makes me just feel lazy because I'm like, it's not enough to, like be sick but it's enough that it like affects the way I like it's hard to get up in the morning it's hard to what all these things that make me just feel like a lazy piece of shit yeah but when I have the flu and my fever is 102 degrees I'm like <laughs> I'm I'm so brave yeah for even existing still no hell yeah isn't that that I mean we could go into like a whole the plight of yeah, uh, this just because you know that men. I yeah, uh, this all circles <laughs> back to how much I um, but hate men. But it's it's speaking being of sick is a job in itself. Yeah, it is. It's a crazy one. And today we're gonna be talking about crazy job listings. Exactly, and uh, the post pandemic job market. As most of you are well aware, you're probably driving to your nine to five right now, or you're in college getting ready to enter the workforce. Yeah, and that's gonna be. I mean. Jobs can be fulfilling. I loved working in advertising. I didn't like so much how there was like a, I mean, I understand like you have a boss and boss and whatever, mm -hmm. but there was also like just politics yeah. of it. Like, and I mean, as someone who's like neurodivergent, having to read when someone wants you to do something as opposed to them mm -hmm. just saying it to your face. Yeah. And now it's in the work environment. Yeah. Someone thinks you're lazy, but it's like no one ever told you. Yeah, exactly. You're supposed to guess. That's lazy. They should have told you. I know. All right, guys, does this sound like you? You obsessively follow that super credible health expert on TikTok. You know, you take all the latest supplements, even though you probably don't have to. I know that if you take a lot of supplements, we've all had this problem. Your pee, neon green, that's me. You know, you follow your coworkers, you know, it's 45 step skincare routine. I know I do. I have like literally, no joke, 27 skincare products on my sink right now. You know, you listen to all these health obsessed folks, but when was the last time you went to an actual good doctor? You know, stethoscope around the neck, lab coat, you're in their office talking about your problems. And if you have to think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc. There are thousands of top rated doctors on ZocDoc. They're all listed with verified patient reviews so you can find and book a doctor who not only has years of experience, an actual medical degree, but they also get you. Like I've said before, I have found all my <laughs> all my doctors on ZocDoc. I had a bit of a wild card psychiatrist and I was like, this is not working out for me. He kept asking me, do you still have ADHD? And I'm like, yes, I do. So since I found my dentist, my primary care physician on ZocDoc, I was like, let me find a psychiatrist. And I found one and I love her and she gets me and she cares. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated 
patient-reviewed doctors, and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. Yeah, it's hard. It's stressful. I worked in restaurants pre-COVID, mm-hmm. um, and it was terrible. And I always think about it now because I'm like, I could not do it now. <laughs> like, yeah. I have been too coddled. Coddled might be the wrong word, but I think it's right. Like, the pandemic, I mean, my job now. Yeah. I mean, I'm my own boss, so that creates, I mean, that creates a lot of flexibility in general. Like, mm-hmm. I push myself pretty hard, but if I have a really bad migraine, I don't need to be like, I just take the day off, which is like yeah. a super luxury, like insane. Yeah. Um, but I, I also just like sit a lot. Like I'm sitting a lot of the time. A lot of my work yeah. is done from my computer. I like, um, if I've had a really, if I like am about to fall asleep, like if I have a hard time falling asleep ever so often, I'm pretty good uh-huh. about falling asleep. But if I like, for some reason, can't fall asleep till three, I can like switch around my work schedule to yeah. like, ma- accommodate that. So just feel, I feel like I'm. It, living at the height of luxury, pretty oh, much. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, working in the restaurant industry was so hard and so physically damaging to my body. Like, truly, my body yeah. still has problems that I can, that I take back to when I worked in restaurants. Like, I have yeah. a shoulder issue in the shoulder, which is what, what I, like, carried a tray in for years. Yeah. And I'm like, I know that that's what it is. Yeah. Um. So I just know, I'm like, I couldn't do it. I could not do it nowadays no i think um i used to work in restaurants as well i think even though i'm getting older i could physically do it but i think i mean i think this is true for any job the thing that stops me from working in the restaurants is stupid people oh okay i can't i mean the reason why i blew up on vine was because i did a waitressing series about stupid questions <sighs> people ask someone's like what's in a vodka cranberry and i was like jaeger okay. and milk like what <laughs> the hell do you think it's literally in the name <laughs> Yeah. Like, uh, so, I mean, th- we're not just talking about service industry, but like the whole post pandemic. And uh, we've all, s- we wanted to do this topic because work from home has beca- now become like a huge part of our yeah. work culture and realizing so many jobs could be remote. And then there's like people who still want to go in the office. And it's like, is that a control thing? Like, if, you're, if your uh, yeah. employees are getting stuff done at home, do you want to have them in the office so you can watch them? I, I know. I think it's weird. I think it, but I don't have a, um, I think also the thought of everyone working from home has negatives too. Like? Like, I know there's, I don't know if this is a bad thing to say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, no, keep going. I'm just thinking, like, I'm just, I'm like, oh, if nobody, I think it's always sad when it's like we start going more towards like a, a, a the, what it's like in Wally, where everyone's just like, actually, it's not really related to Wally, but like just everyone isolated yeah. because of technology has sad parts to it. You like yeah. don't see people at work, whatever. Um, and then also, like, I don't know, maybe like restaurants around, like, I know there's like restaurants around where it's like they fully make their money off of like people on their lunch breaks or like yeah. whatever it is. But besides that, I don't I think it's more weird when when places are like you can work from home but we need you to come in office one day a week. Like I have a uh-huh. lot of friends who have that and it's like why? And then those people are like, "Yeah, I come into office, nobody's there." Yeah. And it's just like I have to work from there for that day and it's super bizarre. Yeah, I think it's very much like a pro choice thing. Where, like, um, I would feel very alone a lot if I worked consistently from home. Yeah. And I need, like, I mean, even with body doubling, I prefer to have someone there. But that's, like, an on and off thing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And some people don't care about it. So I'm like, I guess that depends on the person. Because, yeah, it's so, um, I think it is a control thing. Because I think it's really easy to, I think um, a lot of working in an office is trying to, and I I worked in an office as well. Uh I did phone calls. A lot of it is just trying to like please your boss, yeah, and look like you're really working, yeah. And I think when people started working from home, they were like, "Oh, I can do what I do at work in like two hours, yeah, here. or I can do it while I'm like watching TV, or I can do it while I'm whatever." And it just makes it, I think, just this realization of like how much time is spent yeah. doing literally nothing when your full life revolved around being in the office, yeah. Um, but I. Yeah, I don't know. The thought of going into work every day is really 
stressful to me now. Like I used yeah. to do it every day. And I'm just like, wow, I've become, I mean, I really worried last year I was becoming like a, what do they call it? Hermit? Hermit. I yeah. couldn't remember if that was not okay to say anymore. Hermit is not, a, it's a type of crab. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I got anxious before I said, I was like, am I not supposed to say that anymore? Um, yeah, what I does it like, discriminate against people <laughs> who are like indoors? I don't know. Crazier things have been said. Yeah. I, I was like, but I really like two years ago, I was like, I'm becoming a hermit. Like I really get, and I still have this. It's like, I, if I have plans, I get very anxious to go do them. Yeah. Even like I had my consultation yesterday for my extensions and I was like, Oh, I have such a stressful day. And then I like wrote down my to-do list and I was like, no, you don't. Like, yeah. first of all, you're counting going and getting your hair extensions as a part of your work, which is not work and is yeah. not related to work. <laughs> and you should make up those hours with actual work. Like, that's yeah. not a stressful thing. But because I'm leaving the house, I'm like, okay, I have a big day. Tomorrow's a really big day because yeah. I have to leave and talk to people. And I really was having like a tough, I have to really push myself to go spend time with people. yeah. Because I get really stressed out. No, yeah, I, I get stressed out when I leave my house, too. I think it's, like, because it's outside of your routine. Yeah, I'm you a know? very routine person. Yeah. When I get out of routine, so I struggle. I feel bad. I tell my girlfriend, like, when we go on vacation, I feel like I'm kind of the worst version of myself. Mm -hmm. Like, not, um like, I have a bad personality, but I think I, in my, are you okay? Yeah, I just spit on myself. Okay. It's okay. It's That's part of my routine. <laughs> it's part of your routine. Yes. You gotta do it. Um, I, like... I feel like in our day to day life, I'm a super good partner, like uh -huh. really reliable, get a lot done, like take care of our house, walk our dog. Like I, I just have my things. Like I think I'm a good partner. Like I'm not yeah. ever like, oh, am I like bad? I don't know. But when we go on vacation, I feel like I'm always insecure. Like I yeah. feel like I'm a bad partner because I, when I'm out of my routine, it is really hard for me to um, be helpful because <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel so stressed out. Yeah. So it's like they are. My partner's having to plan a lot of stuff and make sure we're here on time and make sure we're, and I work on it. I'm working on it, but I feel like I'm kind of just not helpful in any capacity because I'm yeah. out of my schedule. So I struggle out of a routine. Same, same. I have never gone on a vacation with my partner just yet, but um, I do want to talk about the great resignation. Let's hear it. So the COVID-19 pandemic caused a major, major disruption in America's labor force, uh, something some may refer to it as the great resignation. In 2022, more than 50 million workers quit their jobs, many of whom were in search of an improved work-life balance and flexibility, increased compensation, and a strong company culture. And in 2021, uh, only well, 47.8 million people quit their jobs. Wow. It's described as the great reshuffle because hiring rates have outpaced quit rates since November 2020. And there are, though there are many people quitting their jobs, many are getting rehired elsewhere. And some believe there's a la labor shortage, um, though there's conflicting opinions on this. Half of a million people across all ages have been permanently disappeared. Half of a million people across all ages have permanently disappeared from the workforce, according to analysis by the National Bureau of Economic Research. Overall labor, labor force participation, um, the share of total population either working or looking for work is slightly lower than when it was in February of 2020. And this is partly due to older workers retiring. But according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, employers have been consistently hiring more workers each month since January 2021. And in total, 3.7 million more people are working in May 2023 than February of 2020 before the pandemic caused major disruption in the U.S. economy. So, yeah, a lot of people are. So there's more people working now. Yeah. There's just a percentage of the population that's missing from the workforce. I think, I mean, as we all know, the pandemic messed with so much of our brains. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, there's the the fact of, like, you are removed from the office. You're removed from society. Like, I remember the first couple months of the pandemic in L.A., the air was so crisp. Yeah. Because people weren't driving. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is crazy, you know? And what is crazy, like, what's also unusual, like, the pandemic hurt a lot of people with their jobs, obviously, but for content creators, I, that's when I personally took off. Yeah. Because people are inside. I mean, me too. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. And so it was like a weird shift of things happening. But I mean, they have, it's, with the pandemic, there was so much was shown that the government doesn't care about right most people how most people don't care about most people and how like i think when you're in it i think a step away from anything yeah is good yeah it always brings like new thoughts so the thought the fact that we were all collectively besides like obviously there are certain jobs that did not get to take off but like that we were all kind of collectively taking a step back yeah was like really wild because i do think 
that um what was I gonna say? Please hold. My brain is you having it. a little moment. Mm-hmm. Um We're taking a step back. We're taking a step back. Um oh yeah, just like I mean, for me, I was like working in a restaurant mm-hmm. and I was also uh heavily involved at a comedy theater. Uh-huh. And I think both of those things, it was like it just ended. Like yeah. it just like ended within a day. Uh-huh. Just like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> and I think me before that used to say I was like I work on my career and not my relationships because relationships come and go, but your career is forever. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like just in one day, it was like, that's not true. Everything can be taken from you. Like yeah. every single thing, including your life, can be taken from you. Like it is just like not none of these things really care about you. Uh-huh. And you're building this up in your head that they do. Um, I was always good with a work life balance in terms of working at a restaurant. I was pretty I was definitely an employee who was like, I don't give a shit. Fire me. I'll just find another job. Yeah. But a lot of people at my restaurant were not like that. It felt really important to have be viewed positively by the managers too. And they some of these people worked there 20 years. Like yeah. really and within a day it was just like, we don't care about you. Yeah. And it feels wild, but I think we all really learned like, wow, why am I giving so much to something that literally does not give a fuck about me. Yeah. Um, and all the work I did to like build this up and I did this instead of doing things I wanted to do meant nothing. Like I'm in the same place as people who started a year ago and didn't care about it at all. Yeah. So I think it just made people be like reevaluate. Like what am I doing? Why am I not doing what I want to do? Yeah. I also think like it just kind of, I mean, besides like workforce, like if, with personal relationships, you saw like people who took it seriously with mask versus like n- not masking and then also anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, I, it shifted everyone. Like yeah. everyone like saw who their friends were or who they were. Like yeah. it was, and the, who their jobs were, who their managers yeah. were, who, like, I mean, there was even Disneyland. They were like, tr- tried to open it. Like, yeah. and I was like, Disneyland, I mean, there's obviously Disney adults, but there's, you mean you want people to open this for like a majority kids yeah. who put their hands on things and no. put them in their mouth? And like, it, they're not even, it's not even a year into the pandemic. And why are you vacationing? I just was like, guys, like it is. And, yeah, it's so you now you see everyone clearly. And these are people, you also, it's like, it really drew the line of like, you see people who have never been told no in their yeah. life. Like truly told no. Like I was told like, oh, you can't get married. Because you're, yeah. you know, what I mean? well, and then I can now, obviously. But it's like, you and can... now she is. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. No. <laughs> so I put this ring on this finger. I bought this ring and I put it on and I was like, oh, it's fun. But then I was like, oh, it fits on this finger. So it'll fit on this finger. It doesn't. This finger is bigger for some reason than this finger. So the only finger this ring fits on is my wedding ring finger. So now I feel like I'm. Prete- people are You're thinking married. I'm pretending to be married. I'm about to be. Listen, who cares? It's fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, but I what was I saying? I don't know. Oh, people just it's like yeah. <laughs> oh, gay people when like you can't get married. Yeah. So it's like oh okay that sucks. Like yeah. that sucks ass. That really yeah. sucks. People who anyone who's been like oppressed has been told no about something pretty uh, upsetting. Obviously. Yeah. Um, or like I used to you know want to have a baby. Yeah. Uh, and like I then the doctor said no no you, you can't. can't have children. They say I can get pregnant, but it will probably be a miscarriage. Oh okay. Sorry, trigger warning. Well, a little late. Probably shouldn't warn after. But <laughs> well, I mean, um, yeah. But that's what I told yeah. Like, I probably can't. But also, like, I could never have a biological child anyways yeah. with my my partner. So, like, there's things that you're just like, oh, that sucks. I really wanted that, but I can't have it. Bummer. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who do not understand that. Like, a lot of people who grew up and it was like, if you re- – obviously, they're told no in a normal way. But it's like, if you really want something, yeah. you get it. Um, because the amount of weddings I watched happen – while people were were dying by the hundreds of thousands. Oh, yeah. I could not believe. Mm-hmm. And it's these people who are like, but this is so important to me. Yeah. Like, this means everything to me. And I'm like, right, sometimes that doesn't matter. Yeah. Sometimes you still aren't allowed to do it. Yeah. Um, you know? The thing is, is like, where it showed, every everyone showed their ass, is like, you, if you get sick, you're like, I don't care, I'll be fine. Where you showed your ass, not you, 
if <laughs> other, well, I was showing my ass during the pandemic. I was shaking it. Other people. Yes. Because yes. you could get other people sick and they could die. And a lot of them did. And that's like, I apply that same sort of logic to parents. Parents are like, I can have a baby. I can do all this stuff to my kid. But they're because they're not thinking of someone else. Yeah. It's only about them. And then they do horrible things. Yeah. And the same people who like partied, they live with their grandma and they're like, grandma got, and that's very unfortunate, but it's like they c- literally could not think about someone else. No. And it's it's not even like, and I know it ha- sucks, obviously, to have your life on hold, but like, it sucks when you die. But it's also like, and what yeah. I just felt, oh, it just really irked me, was this like, it does suck, but we're all, do, do you think I am happy? Yeah. Like, I have video, I have a video of me when I went peak crazy in pandemic uh-huh. like I was in my Brooklyn apartment and I was nuts like I was so m- mentally struggling because we were in a pandemic yeah there's a video of me sobbing talking about like how um afraid of Donald Trump I am this yeah. was a video for myself this was pre-pandemic this was like a, a diary <laughs> you like Phil Dunphy locked in a closet <laughs> yes. like setting your will <laughs> and I was like begging I was like praying that he didn't win the 2020 election to no once again this video was, would never see the light of day and I knew that when I was filming it yeah and I'm like yeah I'm going crazy here like I'm literally going crazy in my mm. apartment I wish uh, my whole life is on hold I haven't seen people in so long and I'm like I, I, of course, want to go out to a party, but I can't. Yeah. And you think, you're like, but it's this. Uh, what am I supposed to do, not go out? I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah. We're all, you think it's more hard for you? It's just wild. The pandemic triggered a new language around work, particularly in the service industry. This came as people re-examined priority and wage demands in light of the health and safety risks involved in interacting with some sometimes unruly public. Oh, my God. Just quickly. That reminds me of everyone who worked at Starbucks. There would be people who were sick coming in asking for like there's there was like a certain drink that like yeah. helped. And the um, they would be sick and they would ask the Starbucks worker to make the drink. And the Starbucks worker would be like, are you sick right now? And the person would be like, yeah, but there's no one in here. And then the Starbucks worker is like, I'm in here. I'm literally a person. And that's how people view yeah. service workers. They're like a yeah. non-person. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Truly wild. I'm. That's, that's crazy. I mean, like, you went, the, the amount of people that went somewhere sick and they're like, oh, thank God only workers are here. Uh, I mean, that was like the day the pandemic got wild. Like the day, I mean, what was that? March 15th? March 14th? Oh, but this is crazy. What? The week before the pandemic was announced, I did a vlog in a grocery store, fully stocked shelves, literally less than a week later. Gone. We went back. Everything was gone. Yeah. I like yeah. had a, I can't remember what day it is, but it was like the day that people were like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. This is actually crazy. And I worked at a fine dining restaurant. Yeah. I am at work, not a single, uh, like, no, but usually it's packed. Yeah. There was like two tables that people were at. Our, we had servers that were like crying and asking to go home because yeah. they were so scared um and a couple of them did and then i remember i they were like kendall eat at the bar and i just went and like had a dessert at the bar like the work like no work was happening but even so i was like it's crazy these two people are here like there were people sprinting by the windows with like groceries and yeah. like crying and they were just like having their lunch having because i think it is very much like I always bring up The Purge, but I really think there's some truth to what that movie's about of this like rich people do not think this stuff applies to them. Oh, yeah. Um, And unfortunately, in uh, some reality, they're right um, because they have health care and have all these things. But um, they it was so weird. And then I left work that day early, like they shut down work early and I sprinted to Whole Foods because that was what was next to my apartment. Yeah. And I had no idea what was going on and everything was empty. The shelves were fully empty. And I just remember the only thing that was really available was like peas for some reason, like frozen peas. Yeah. I got like eight bags of frozen peas. Yeah. And then I ran, uh, as I was running home, I popped into the bodega under my apartment and I felt so bad. I might've told you this before, but they, you know, the bodega that's under your apartment, you eat at, you're at yeah. all the time. So you know them pretty well. And they had been really nervous about they were opening up a new section of their bodega. So before it was pretty just like a like a casual, normal bodega. They had yeah. like coffee and stuff. And they were opening up a grocery section. And like that was their opening day. 
and it was packed oh, in this shit. bodega in yeah. a way that it never is because people were panicking. Yeah. I ran in and was like, I bought them out of all their emergency, which is so funny, as if that would protect me from COVID, like the yeah. emergency drink powders. But I like did no idea what I was doing. I was just like buying, like truly pa- panic buying. I, like, yeah. I was just panicked. And they were like, Kendall, business is booming. People love the grocery section. And I was like, oh my God, they don't know about yeah. COVID. Like they do have no idea. And I was just like, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then I left, but I always think about, I always think about them because I, and yeah. then I came back. So then I went home for a little bit um, and I came back to move and I went and saw them yeah. and they got a very, it was really sweet, but really sad. They thought I died. Oh my gosh. And they like came out behind the counter and like hugged me. And the guy was like, I just, you know, cause I didn't know them that well, but I saw them every day for like two yeah. years. Cause I would always get breakfast there. Um, and they, yeah, we're really upset because they just thought I died. I was like, well, I forgot to say goodbye, I guess, but I didn't think about it, you know? That is actually crazy you say that. Something similar happened when I got sober, but I actually just moved. <laughs> I like did. I bought alcohol every day, and then yeah. I went back, and he was like so relieved. He thought you died. Yeah, and I was like, no, dude, I'm just not, it's not my, yeah. yeah. Oh, But yeah. Um, we're talking about the job market, but um, well, you all know, where were you when the pandemic was announced? But, um, you know, there's new language because of the in the job market post pandemic you know pandemic benefits help people manage through layoffs a brief recession you got like 1600 1200 bucks like that didn't help anyone um you know as they engage with work it often took higher pay to secure their help uh the pandemic years in general saw people with jobs at the bottom of the income distribution receive larger raises than those at the top narrowing the pay gap across um that's interesting and so we were going to talk about just the general crazy job listings we wanted to focus on we see those memes where it's like you need 10 years of experience to be um you know a sandwich artisan at subway and they're like who the hell is this for yeah um i may have been too literal with mia because she was like i'm having a hard time finding unusual jobs and i should have been like unusual in like why are these the listings yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but um so if you've ever been frustrated by a job, let us know. Also, I didn't mean to cut us off uh, mid-pandemic. But the pandemic was wild. I remember <sighs> I was wiping my butt for literal weeks with your 13 birthday napkins, you know? <laughs> and I had to throw them away because the, the yeah. plumbing was so delicate. It's um, wi- it was wild, wild time. But I just think it made everyone like really rethink. I think that's yeah, like... what's it, important. Yes, it's a real turning point. Also, and I feel like we forget a little bit it's like that amount of mass death is yeah. so deeply traumatizing traumatizing yeah and like i lived in new york like i knew people who you know passed away it's like and even when my dad died that's one person but like yeah. my dad died and it made me rethink it any t- death makes you feel like what am i doing here you know it's yeah. a real existential like i watched my dad die I, like watched him be no, alive be- and then yeah. die and it really like affected. I was like, "Whoa, we really just are atoms that will disappear one day." Like that yeah. is wild because you watch someone who has a whole life, who's like so important to you, who has like all these thoughts and has TV shows they like and has yeah. all this, and now they're ju- they just don't they're just not there anymore. And it makes you be like, "What am I doing?" And that's just one person. So yeah. I think watching like that amount and it changes your full brain in my opinion because there were websites i remember my mom and i going the websites and it would have like death tolls and you're just watching like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people die and you just are like my brain cannot process this like i don't even have an emotion because it is like how can i process this at all um so i think that type of thing just makes everyone be like what am I doing? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, that, like, totally, like, that makes sense. Like, it's, like, when you hear things, like, you hear advice or, like, s- stuff like that, it kind of goes in one ear out the other. Society, you wake up, you go to work, you're just, you know, after five, you go to the gym, and you're just living this existence, and then someone dies or something major happens, yeah. and you're like, dude, none of this is real. None of it's real. I mean, it yeah. was, when I watched my dad die, I could not believe why, like the way and my partner and I've talked about this word because they were with me as well and it felt uh, we both had a very similar feeling of just like it made it less scary I think like yeah. death 
because we watched him just like die and we were like oh it really is that simple yeah <laughs> like and now he's just not here and it makes you feel like obviously grief and sadness and all yeah. that but also I was just like what am I do why do I care so much what everyone thinks like yeah I one day I'm just gonna die and mm. everyone will literally forget I existed yeah um not that I've forgotten my dad existed but like I'm sure in a hundred years, we'll be talking a whole lot less about him. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just all kind of, it's just life. Life just goes so fast. So it feels very, it's a wild thing. So I think that amount of people dying, everybody was experiencing losing yeah. someone or lo- or even if they didn't lose someone they knew, but like, it, it's just wild. I do have a question. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's personal. Go ahead. It is personal. All right. So do you feel, since you knew that your father was going to pass, yeah, do you feel like you had a much different experience than most people who interact with death? Yeah. Do you, like, cause I, I, I mean, I've, I mean, I, the, people get sick all the time. Sure. But I'm saying a lot of people pass unexpectedly. Yes. Do you feel like you had a lot, you were a lot f- more grounded in the sit- when it happened? Yeah. I yeah. think it felt right. Like, yeah. I think I wouldn't have changed anything about it. Like yeah. I wasn't, I think a lot of people are like, there's a sadness in, oh, what could he have lived? Yeah. And what could we have done together? And I, like, he was so sick by the time he died that it was like, this is not, nothing good. It was only getting sadder and sadder yeah. by the day. Like, we used to at least, like, be able to play games and, and board games and, like, laugh or whatever. But he was getting so sick that it was just like, that is not. So that piece was taken away from yeah. me. Um, I do feel like it was, <laughs> like... I think because like he's been sick since I was like six years old. Yeah. So I think there is a long like it was I don't think I realized how much weight was on me yeah. all the time because it was from when I was a little girl of this like every time I said goodbye to my dad to go to school. I was like, this could be it. Like uh-huh. every time. Not to sound dramatic, but really like I was every birthday when I was little. I was like, I hope my dad lives. another. You know, it's yeah. just very like it's such a like his death is always in my mind, even when I was yeah. a little kid. Um, and so I think for me, when I found out he was going to die, like really was like, we're here's the plan, he's going to pass away. I definitely grieved it so much. It, it felt like a breakup where you, <laughs> it's a, it, more so, yeah. but it felt like one of those breakups where like you cried so much during the relationship yeah. that when it's done, you're kind of like, oh, I actually feel okay. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously super, you know, less less I mean I was like very upset when my dad passed yeah. away and it was deep and I'm still like upset about it but my like the six months leading up to him dying I think were I like grieved it all and was yeah. very upset so I was able to plan I was able to really like um process it and then once he died I think I was most because I knew I was gonna be really sad but I was most surprised by the weight that was lifted from me yeah because it's also like you feel shitty all the time because you also feel bad like my dad was so sick Uh and like was sad and depressed because he was so sick and like couldn't do anything he liked and like felt in pain all the time so I always feel like guilt but then also like Mm -hmm. I think there's just a, a different level of anxiety constantly when you have a sick parent where it's like I would be working and I'd get a call from my dad. And I think a lot of people who have healthy parents are just like, oh, I'll call them back. But ever since I can remember, I was like, oh, I got to answer this. It could be the last time I talked to my dad. Yeah. You know, it's just very stressful and puts so much pressure on like being good to them all the time and making sure you don't ever like regret saying anything to them and just so much anxiety. I think that I was able to like, not only when my dad died, feel relief to be able to like, not be anxious about it all the time but I also was able to like process how I felt about the whole like 20 years of it yeah because it was all kind of it was pretty intense but I did not have that like oh fuck yeah I did not I was not prepared for this like I was more I couldn't be more prepared (laughs) yeah for it um and it was still really hard but it was not like a pull the rug pulled out from under me yeah I was gonna circle back to the first thing that we were talking about when you said that you were sick like you're you're all like you say that you feel kind of just generally sick all the time. Yeah. But it's not enough where you're like, I can rest. Yeah. So when you finally got like just super sick, it was this relief of like, thank fucking God. Yes. You know, so that I, is exactly what it yeah. is related to that because it is like when I, when they were like, your dad's going to die, I felt like I was able to really like take time to yeah. be like upset about my dad being sick. 
which I'd never gotten to do. Because even in like when I was a kid, it was like my dad would have a really serious medical issue. Yeah. But it happened so much that it was just like we don't get to like take off. It wasn't like, oh, I got to take off school and I got to stop doing what I was doing because it was just that constantly. But that feeling and anxiety is still the same as anyone else going through that. Yeah. Who it doesn't happen to as often. Um, and I felt like the six months where I was like, he's dying. I was finally allowed to like really be upset about it. And like yeah. people were like understanding. They're like, well, Kendall needs some time to like be upset because she, her dad's dying. And yeah. everyone was so understanding. And it let me like process it. Whereas I think in the past, it's just been like, yeah, I've always felt like I've always been like my dad's going to die soon, but yeah. I can't like do that for 20 years. So I think there was something healing about like letting myself really like cry it out. Because mm-hmm. um, I like never cried. I mean, my dad like had a heart attack, went to the hospital. My mom woke me up in the middle of the night and was like, your dad had a heart attack and he's in the hospital. And I remember just being like, okay, all right, well, I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> like yeah. I just, because it's just so constant, like yeah. constant health, uh, sad, like hard. It's hard. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine um, if, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth or just step in your shoes for a second. Like I, I feel like they, like you said, like you would feel some weirdly relief from yeah these final moments but um, and I think a lot of people have that like if they've had a parent with like cancer for years yeah. they're like obviously devastated but yeah. you're like it's hard to watch someone you love so much go through so much pain yeah and it's also like you're constantly stressed out <laughs> yeah you're constantly like oh my god I like feel so you know and like it was not like if I'd been told 20 years ago on this date, it's when your dad's going to die. I'm sure it would have been very different. But I never knew. Like, we always were kind of like, mm, two more years. Like, this yeah. might be. Like, he, and he was, like, so uh, dark. And so he was always like, this is my last Christmas. Like, since I was six, it's been yeah. his last Christmas. So it makes you, like, every Christmas, you're like, oh, God. Like, you're singing Christmas carols with your dad. And you're like, I got to really take this in because this is the last year. And it's, like, just, it's it's stressful. It's, like, constantly, like. Dude. The stress, like, I didn't feel like I got to be, like, a bitchy teenager to him. Because yeah. if I was too bitchy, I would, like, have to come back and be like, but I don't want that to be the last thing I say to you, so let's yeah. just end on a good note. No, that's, um, you're, that's kind of how my dad is without the physical, well, I mean, he has been physically ill random times. Yeah. But he always says, like, I'm going to die soon. <laughs> and it, like, he's been saying it, like, but he doesn't have a reason. And, yeah. and so I'm just like, so whenever he, because my dad is very dramatic. Yeah. Like, you know how, like, men are when they're sick? My dad, like, takes yeah. that there. And every panic attack, every anxiety, he's like, it's the end. It's the end. At least you're, I'm so sorry. At, At least, least mine was right. You had a reason. Mine, I'm just like. Now, what the hell is happening here? But, like, <laughs> yes, uh, yes I, I do understand the constant anxiety, to an extent, the, con- the constant anxiety. But, um, <clears throat> anyways, the pandemic it was terrible. Was mass it, it, death, you know, it was, you got to see how little people took, how ableist people were. Yeah. If essentially, like, the, and so a lot of people who are disabled have a disability. Any the disability is one of <laughs> sorry that made me a lot of people who are disabled have a disability. Well, I mean, <laughs> like I, mean I don't know if you but like we could any one of us could become disabled at literally any second. Yeah, and so too it's the one of the only like marginalized groups where you can become it immediately. Yeah, you know I mean we all if you survive could become old and then ageism applies to you. But like disability is one that can happen like at a split Any second. Moment, yeah. And so people like not taking COVID seriously and then they just got long COVID and you don't want anyone to I mean even stupid people don't deserve to be heard. But it's like how you think that things didn't apply to you yeah like laws of the world yes and that's crazy but that's and now we're going to talk about the government and jobs dun, dun, dun. and capitalism and how capitalism forced us to go to work where they forced us out of our homes into the unknown into the danger zone yeah because they didn't care it's all about the bottom line and we our lives are expendable so let's read some crazy job postings here it comes uh-huh. okay uh here it comes. I'm going to find it, and then we're going to do it. So these are from Reddit, um, and there's uh, r slash recruiting hell and r slash choosing beggars. Oh, my God, no. I wanted Mia to make this a second topic. Choosing beggars. Do you know that subreddit? No. Oh, it's it's like people who are out of their mind. Like, um, oh, God, there was, like, one where where this woman was trying to buy something on, like, Facebook Marketplace. Uh-huh. And, uh, oh, 
She was trying to, bu- okay, so she reached out to this guy on Facebook who mm. went to a school and he had like this exclusive, like first edition, like Pokemon card. Yeah. And she's like, hey, she reaches out to this guy. He didn't come to sell it. He just came to show it. Yeah. So she reaches out and she's like, hey, my son really wants that card. I'll give you 500 bucks. And the guy's like, oh, it's not for sale. And she's like, come on, you're taking something from a child. <gasps> Should I like maybe in- increase it from 400 to 500? The guy's like, it is not for sale. Also, that is not like a good, like that wouldn't even be a good deal for me. And so like he sends her like a, a listing on eBay of something similar. It's like $20,000. Yeah. And she's like, "You that's crazy. All that for a card? You I can't believe that you do this would do this to my child." And it's like that's what choosing beggars is. Is like someone who is like so um me me me, give me yeah. give me give me and they like they're stupid. Ugh. But okay, well maybe we'll do a whole episode on it. I want to do an episode on choosing beggars, but The first one is yes. it's, the title is The Most Insane Job Posting I've Ever Seen. Yes. And here it is. This is not a standard game design project. This is not a typical game environment. The team members earn experience points that are written on a board in the main building. As a task is completed, team members are to journal their daily activities from their perspective and from the perspective from the tools they use to accomplish the task. The amount of financial compensation is dependent on each team member at completion of the game. Expect not to be financially compensated for a minimum minimum of three and a half years. Okay, those are just quotes from the job listing, but the, like imagine... Oh, sorry, I didn't click the link. Oh, I always yeah. do that, sorry. The, it's called um, Unique Game Gig, but we're going to run through it. It says, need to hire two freelancers looking for young and old individuals with a desire to work on an immersive and super secretive project. What to expect? Working and living in a house in the middle of nowhere with five Fiber optic internet in need of repair. A place of rest and food is given. The nearest larger city is approximately 40 minutes away, and city trips are made at minimum at w- of once per week. During um, the during the te- all teams sh- shall stay in the house. Food is given. This is not standard design project. Whatever. Um, uh, selection is very very limited. However, encouraged. The team members may experience earn yeah experience points that are written on a board in the main building. As the task is completed, uh, team members are to journal their daily activities from the perspective and from the perspective of the tools they use to accomplish the task. So imagine writing down what your job is right now. You have to write down every day, like the the job from your perspective and then from the perspective of your tools. So my computer. This is how my computer experiences my job. Crazy. And then you don't get compensated for three and a half years. Well, and maybe not even after that. It says just to definitely not be expected to be compensated for three and a half years. Yeah. Team members are also encouraged to bring their own equipment. However, there is no company compensation for utilization of that equipment. Basically, if a team member decides to bring a laptop, the company is not going to compensate that team member any extra for bringing the laptop. So you don't get compensated financially. You live out in the boonies. With a bunch of other random people, you will not be paid for three and a half years, and you have to journal your experience of this. This is just torture. Yeah, I don't know. That's bizarre. What does it? And they don't know what this was for. Um. So no, I'm gonna keep reading. This is a labor intensive job, and the a non labor intensive job mostly expect to do tasks that you might have never done. Pre game <sighs> duties like gardening, painting, what block this laying, is like a cult. Wood sanding, cleaning, organizing, foundation setting, ditch digging, building construction. They're not even designing a game. They are just building a house in the middle of nowhere. Ew, that is really scary. I don't like that at all. Oh, my God. History. We have a team member in their 60s and a team member in their 30s. Be advised that age is a number. Um, This is crazy. But here's the game development duties. Rigging animation, storyboarding, going to have games with, okay, level design, game design, rendering, testing, visualization, effects, coding, lots and lots of coding, research and development, engineering, etc. That is on top what of. What possibly is the gardening stuff for? That's, that's so That's for bizarre. the actual physical maintenance of the building. But that, oh my God, that's not. Whoever listed this needs to be, Yeah. there needs to be. And I, some, I, I know you can't say it, I but can't. it is what has to happen. Um, wow, that's nuts. Okay, where's the next one? I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. Is it the? Can someone explain how this is entry level? Um, how having your own laptop is. Oh, now. good. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Sorry. Yeah, could, you can do. Can someone explain how this is entry level? Yeah, oh. just click it. Okay. Sorry, I don't mean to talk to you like you're what? a baby. I am a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I am a baby. Um, okay. This one is titled, Can Someone Explain How This Is Entry Level? Why do companies do this? 
So this is um, the project coordinator that Kendall said, full-time entry level. They're a leading global technical recruitment company providing professional contract and permanent staff to a diverse worldwide client base within the oil and gas industry. So it's obviously going to be messed up. Job title, project coordinator, uh, location, Calgary. Uh, occasional travel as required. Schedule Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week. Uh, contract length, one year. Start date ASAP. The description is reporting to the lead. Technology and innovation funding. You will ensure business. It cuts off after that. But what else is a required skill qualification? And I start at the support. Um, start at previous experience. Previous experience is in executing government funding applications, negotiation agreements, and project reporting. Mm-hmm. That's all it lets me read. Oh, uh, and I'm then so sorry. there's also familiarity with the provincial and federal funding landscape, familiarity with uh, Canada Revenue Agency, SR and ED program, and previous experience in the preparation and support of SR and ED claims and assets. You need 10 plus years of experience and experience writing projects, proposals, investment proposals, and funding applications in an asset. So wow. you, this is entry level. 10 plus years experience. And you need, it's full-time entry level. You need 10, that's insane. That's not entry level. That and just isn't right. They, they do this to like, I think it's a way to just discriminate against young people. I don't know. I have no, I mean, or a way to make more, uh, like, people who should be getting paid a lot more feel comfortable getting paid a lot less. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, it's entry level. But if you have 10 plus years experience, you should be getting this salary. But then at entry level, of course, that's not expected. You like, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why? Um, and someone, uh, one of the top comments says, I report this stuff to LinkedIn. Uh, remote that's not remote. Yeah, it's not remote work. Um, it's entry level. It's not entry level. Um, it uh, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Um yeah that's wild that is so annoying like um yeah someone said the pay is entry level it's like yeah the only thing entry level about it is how little you get paid exactly these people are so freaking cheap you know like that's but it does not make sense to me because i'm like obviously corporations are shitty to their employees Mm -hmm. but i'm like that is so expensive like to be shitty to your employees is an expense in itself yeah because you are constantly having turnover you're constantly having to train new people. Like, people quitting is expensive. Like, I always used to tell my, when I worked in a restaurant, people would be like, I'm worried I'm going to get fired. And I would be like, you have to realize how much work it is for them to fire you. Yeah. They have to fire you, do all that paperwork. Then mm-hmm. they have to replace you. Then they have to pay someone to train that person. And then they have a new employee who sucks because they're new. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it is like, I don't understand why companies are like, just so bad to employees. I know I sound like such an idiot. It's like obvious. This is such an obvious statement, no. but it's like so mean. And then the turnover is just insane. They can't keep a single employee. And it's yeah. like, how is this financially benefiting you? Yeah. Or I, my favorite thing they love to do now, which is be so mean to their employees, but like put a vending machine and a, a pool table in like the office area. Yeah. And they're like, enjoy. Yeah. Like my first job I did social media. This is what I, I hate. I did social media management and anyone who works in social media management, they, people, older generations don't understand what actually a lot of where the, they don't understand what goes into certain jobs. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, so you're also a copywriter. You're also a photographer. You're also a graphic designer. Yes. You're yes, also yes. like, it, I'd, and they were expecting me to do all these jobs. And I was like, I manage social media. You should have all these assets. Yes, and they're like, yes. assets in what way? I'm like, photo- product photography? You want me to take my iPhone out there? Mm-hmm. You don't even have like a... And, and like. And then they send you, because I have had friends who've had this exact thing, where they're yeah. a social media manager, expected to take all the photos, expected to uh, do all the other stuff, expected to be able to do graphic design. Yeah. It's like, no, and then they're sending... They're like, oh, these photos don't really look how I want... You're like, that's not my job. Of yeah. course they don't look how you want. I took it on my iPhone <laughs> and I have no nothing about taking photos. Yeah. Crazy. No, exactly. And I uh, this was actually something I, I tweeted. I wish I could I wish I knew where it was. But like it's um like everyone there's just like you don't even understand what goes into the job. I I, I just wanna I wanna scream for these people. We do have another one. Um this is an actual job posting. That's the title from a debt collecting agency. So you know that this is already going to be crazy. So this is on Indeed. It says, no, there is no hourly wage or base salary. Sorry for the confusion, but Indeed doesn't really have a category for high paid commission only jobs. And besides, winners don't need chicken feed. Uh- they want to premium steak or fish. 
Yes, you can work wherever you want, part-time, full-time, and for a while at least, from your boat, home, cabin, deer stand, ice house, etc. If you want to make 5000 to 10000 or more per month, apply. If you have never made 5000 to 10000 a month, don't bother. Go somewhere else. We want top performers and winners. Losers and whiners need not apply. Yes, we have a tell-it-like-it-is culture. We will treat you friendly and pay you well. We expect you to be professional and play nice in the sandbox. That's not professional to say that. And make a lot of money. Again, that's whatever. And yes, if you manage to bullshit your way through the interviews. You have this in the job posting and you want everyone to be professional. I know, it's bizarre. If you manage to bullshit your way through the interviews, no worries. We'll wave to you on the unemployment line the minute the consumer and your teammates realize you really are the prick that you tried to hide from us. Again, professional. If you have read this far, uh, please apply only if you have experience as a third-party debt collector. If you don't and you apply... Uh, totally expect a rude response for wasting my time. And But here's the thing. They're, wow. I mean, it's so unlike debt collectors to be scummy. <laughs> you know? Those are the nicest guys I've ever met. That's It's like, the, yes, indeed does have a category for um, commission. They specified high-paid commission-only jobs. I think they were just, they're idiots. That is the most insane thing I've ever read. <sighs> it is like, yeah, professional just don't say that it's the least professional job listing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, you have bullshit in the job listing. Yeah, and it makes me feel like you don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah. you clearly don't. You need someone to do this because you don't know how. Yeah. And you have no idea what you're doing, or you wouldn't have worded it this way. A man who doesn't wipe his ass wrote this. Yeah. A man who shirks all of his responsibilities on women wrote this. Yeah. This is the most unprofessional bullshit I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, and this is from Choosing Beggars. God, guys. One comment, and we'll do an episode on choosing beggars. Just one. Just one, and I'll make you hate all these people. (laughs) Craigslist job offer, we won't pay you, but we can offer PhD-level education within six months. College is a scam. (laughs) It's so funny to call it PhD-level education. I'm like, the most important part about having a PhD is that you get the PhD. You went to college. (laughs) That you have, it's not that, oh, now I'm so smart because I have all this, I mean, I guess that's part of it, but I'm like, you need the PhD. All their PhD is a a trucker had that says pretty huge dick from Myrtle (laughs) Beach. But yeah, keep going. So this is a, it's for a semiconductor design apprenticeship instead of college. This is a 16 hour per week voluntary position for four months intended to be an alternative to going to university for an electrical engineering degree. In two months, you'll acquire the same knowledge as a BSEE. In four months, the same knowledge of an MSEE. In six months, the same as a PhD. Salaries will be begin once you provide value to our company. <laughs> this feels a little um, subjective to yeah. who's designing that. We are an extremely high tech semiconductor company. This is now using our that is now using our automation. Sorry, I can't see this very well. Um, that is now using our automation to design AI chips. We are located in the middle of downtown uh, Tempe. Tempe. Yeah. We expect to work on DoD projects that will require U.S. citizenship. It is difficult to find qualified U.S. born MSEE graduating from colleges. We also found that high school algebra, physics, Googling, and passion is all you need to succeed. College is a scam. Don't waste your money. It takes only one year to become an intermediate level engineer. Positions available wannabe analog circuit designers, wannabe digital circuit designers. You will work on RISCV CPUs with interleaved SRAM. Okay. Want to be layout designers, want to be C++ programmers, want to be patent attorneys, technical marketing. Minimum requirements, high school math, chemistry, physics. Uh, Okay, that Uh already that person, maybe I'm wrong. I did pretty bad in school. But if you're in physics, you probably are going to go to college. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. You expect, yeah, and also DOD is Department of Defense. You think the government is just going to keep going, yeah. A can-do attitude. Everything is easy once you get your mind around it. You must love algebra and be logical. You must be able to get a security clearance, clean record. You must have high aptitude. You'll be working with MSEEs and PhDs. Desirable. Some experience coding in C++ or Python. Familiarity, familiarity, sorry, with... Linux. Mm -hmm. This is not a position for dummies and lazy-minded individuals. Once again, you'll be working with MSEEs, engineers with master's degrees. We are... It's so funny. You're talking about the engineer... Their big pull. They're like, you'll be working with people with real degrees. 
come here so you don't get one. Yeah. It's like crazy. Anyways, um, if you're interested in playing video games outside of work, please don't apply. We are looking for serious technical people. And I don't mean to like, um, I don't mean to, but if they likely, it doesn't say you need like a GED, but they also like want, and I, I'm so sorry, they also want someone with a clean record. I think that like, not saying that they're, I'm saying that's a very difficult, very narrow. You think? Finding someone with a clean record and a G, without a GED? Without, yeah. I feel like that wouldn't be that hard for some reason. <laughs> I'm saying it's unfortunate, but I'm saying it may be hard. Sure, sure. I, I mean, yeah, it might be hard. I mean, I think they've made this impossible. It's also like, so you want someone, if you don't have a G, if you don't have a GED, yeah. but you, you love math, it says you love algebra. Yeah. You also have done chemistry and physics. Yeah. Which physics, maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, because I truly might be wrong on this. Physics is kind of like the highest science you take in high school. Probably, yeah. Like I like I don't know many people who took phys- physics in high school. It was like yeah. the really smart like kids who went to Stanford took physics. Yeah. From what I remember. So you want some <laughs> it's like this person doesn't exist. Like you're right. It's like all of these qualifications don't match up. You really cannot have this person. Unless it is like it says it's not for dummies, but I'm like, if you're in physics and want to be an engineer and you decide to go to this school, you are a dummy already because this is wild. Yeah. No, this is like the stupidest thing ever. What is it? Um, it also, I'm trying to find the listing. It says initially volunteer, then $100,000 if you prove yourself. That doesn't make any, and it's an internship. You never do anything where the goals you have to achieve are based on someone's opinion. Like, yeah. that literally mean nothing. Like, it's like, until you deserve. It's like, what? Like, uh-huh. what does that mean? That does not mean anything. Um, yeah, this is wild. There's a lot of crazy job listings. I think it's made, yeah, it's just like a lot of people used to work jobs pre-pandemic because they had to. Obviously, we still have to work jobs. But, like, yeah. I think it was like, oh, but I don't have to be so miserable mm-hmm. as I was. Like, I accept more high quality of life now yeah um and you see a lot of people who are like oh i can work my same job same job from my room with my dog Mm -hmm. i can ask for more money and i can like take care of my like i can clock out at five and be like that's healthy to clock out at five yeah um so i think it's good i think these are so insane i i honestly I'm sure women have written bad job listings, but it always feels like the most like mansplainy, man written thing I've ever read in my life. Like all of these. Also, the thing is, if you're interested in playing video games outside of work, please don't apply. So they're not even playing video games in work. Like no, it's they, like, if it, want, they think someone who plays video games is lazy. Yeah, if they said like don't play video games at work, I'd be like, yeah. yeah. But then they're just you can't have hobbies. It's only 16 hours a week, so like you just can't during that other amount of time during the week it's wild i mean i don't know if you, people do this anymore but even not that long ago like six years ago everyone i knew had to do and i did one like an unpaid internship really had to oh at my school you had to do it didn't have to be unpaid you had to do an oh. internship and like the only internships that existed in new york were unpaid like they were mm-hmm. all unpaid and i just accepted it because i was like this is how it works you have to work for free that's just something you do now i'm like that's crazy yeah like, i would go into a place 16 hours a week work for fully free just because it was like an internship. Oh, this is another episode. Class consciousness after the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Like when the celebrities posted that Imagine video. Yeah. That's when the, the whole illusion shattered. Well, because I actually watched a TikTok about, we should do a whole episode about class consciousness. It's interesting. Because the I watched a TikTok the other day of someone talking about why like, it has made there used to be such little access Mm -hmm. to celebrities. Like you would look at like J-Lo and you'd be like, I assume she's filthy rich. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't know what that even means. You know what I mean? I just rich to someone who like grows up with a normal amount of money or who doesn't have any money. Rich just means we don't know. It's just like you have a lot of money. I couldn't even imagine what you'd do with that money. But then they show you on their social media now what they do. And I think like the Kardashians, it was like, and I think it, you know, goes both, it's worked in their favor, but also has hindered them. It's like, We're going to show people how much we have to, like, make them want to be us. Yeah. But what really happened is it, like, opened up a whole world for poor and normal income people to be like, that's what your kid's birthday party looks like? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, I didn't know that rich was a thing. Like, I didn't realize. Like, I thought you guys just, like, weren't stressed out about money and, like, went on cool trips. I didn't realize that, like, you have a million dollars worth of purses in your 
second closet. You know what I mean? Like I didn't realize that much was happening. So it really has opened up a whole world for people to be like, that's crazy. I don't know. Oh, there's this also this like discussion topic that I'm seeing on TikTok. Rich people don't realize that they can be cringe and now they're becoming cringe. Like you think that if you have a lot of money, you you can't be cringe. But like there's so many just like wealthy people. They show off their wealth and you're like, this is so tone deaf. It's cringe. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. Well, it's also like this is kind of different, but people have been talking a lot since like Drew Barrymore did an apology video. Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher did an apology video. People have been laughing about like, when you're that rich and yeah. you have to make an apology video, you can tell these people have searched their house for the most normal <gasps> wall. Yes. Where it's like Drew Barrymore's is like in a room that looks like a murder house. Like it yeah. looks, it's just like a white wall and there's no furniture. And I'm like, what did you, it looks like you rented this room just for this apology video. And then Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher always do their videos. They've done multiple in yeah. front of this weird like rustic wall they yeah. have. And it's like, if you zoom out, because people have like on TikTok have found exactly what wall it is. They did an architect- uh, artic- yes. architectural digest interview and they can see the entire layout of the house so the and wall it, yes and if you yeah. see the wall if you zoom out of that wall it is not rustic yeah. it is a very expensive like bougie it's just so funny where they're like if we film an apology video we need to look really poor it's like what yeah. is this psychology that's happening but people always do that their apology videos are like on the floor of their kitchen and you can only see like there's no furniture yeah and they look like shit. They have nothing, no makeup on. They're wearing like a blank tank top that's like from, they went out and bought a Target tank top and they're yeah. like, I am one of you. Please yeah. don't cancel me. And now, yeah, like now it's the class, we're going to do an episode on that and that's then fun. choosing beggars. So it's like to, well, I mean, they're capitalism. And so we woke up during the pandemic. We realized that our employers didn't care about us. No one cared about each other. We were all getting sick. And I think... um we do actually have someone who's a hiring manager here today. Oh, good. And I'm kind of like, I mean, I won't be here for the interview. You don't want, yeah, you didn't get an interview. No, it's like kind of triggering. I had, I, they said to interview them, you needed five plus years of experience. I lied on mine. You didn't, so now you can't interview. No, me. I, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that I could lie. So yeah. I guess I'll just, uh, I'll just have to wait outside and see what you say. Yeah, it is crazy. What you said one last thing about how you're like, we realized people didn't care about other people, and I'm yeah. like, I do feel like it's so true because it's like literally, okay, this is putting a lot of people in a box right now, but I feel like conservatives famously uh-huh. are like, we care about the elderly. You need to respect your elders. Cause, well, first of all, because they're all old. So I don't, I'm like, this is crazy that you guys are the ones yeah. who don't want to wear masks. You're the ones who are going to die if this, you know, whatever. It was like, the, all they care about is respect the elders. Kids these days don't respect elders. And for a week, they couldn't be bothered. Instantly, they said, well, only old people die of it. Who cares? Let yeah. them die. I'm like, excuse me? You think I don't respect my elders because I don't call my mom ma'am? Yeah. But you literally don't give a fuck if my parents die? That's crazy. Kendall, you, we want to end this, but I, you just said something that like triggered a thought. We're going to talk about conservatives not actually caring. <laughs> Think about the groups that conservatives advocate for. Animals and unborn fetuses. They go hard for both those group, groups, which animals I understand. And veterans. But what do the uh, veterans actually know they do not? The VA is... No, but I mean they don't care. That's what I mean. They don't actually care. They don't care. So we're going to think about they go hard for animals and unborn babies. Why is that? What oh, do, I see what you're saying. What do those two groups share? They can't ask for anything in return. Mm. Right? So, like, there are, if you want to actually help people and you choose certain groups, LGBTQ, you help them, they can ask for something back. And then you're like, you're ungrateful. The, you go so hard for unborn fetuses because they don't they cannot ask you for and none anything of them can voice their a dog can't be like actually i don't really care about that yeah so you don't you cannot be held accountable by these two groups help animals and and don't <laughs> help animals but like you just notice it and then we i can't get into that but we have this hiring manager here and they're gonna be here to right now and we're gonna <laughs> talk to that well kennel's gonna talk to them bye bye And welcome back. I'm your host, Kendall Landreth, and I'm here to interview Patricia McIntyre. Mm-hmm. That's right. How are you doing today, Patricia? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing good now that you're here. I'm excited to get to chat with you. I know that you're a hiring manager. Uh, that I am. So your job is to hire and fire at a company. Is yes. that correct? What, what do you do? We make artisanal 
weapons of mass destruction. Okay. Uh huh. Um, interesting. Mm-hmm. What What has hiring been like for the past five years? It's been different. People have been super entitled. Um, okay. We need physicists. We need designers. We need people to get us coffees. And people are demanding a livable wage. What would you consider a livable wage? Like, I don't know, like something between like 10 and 11 cents per hour. Oh, so that is not right. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean that's statistically uh, wrong. According to inflation, we're with well within our rights to deny them payment. Okay. Um, I don't know where you got that information, <laughs> but I don't think that I think that might not be accurate. I think accurate is a hard word, and I'd like to CC and a manager. Okay. What positions are currently open at your company? Um, like I said, we have um, person handling and firing and okay. testing the weapons of mass destruction. That's a really scary job. We've got cleanup. Um, of what? The bodies? Yes, actually. Um, we have the bodies. Um, people have signed their, their life li- rights ri- away, you know? Yeah. Um, they have to audition for that. So this feels like something you'd have to pay someone millions of dollars to do. You'd be surprised. What someone will do for a handful of cash. Mm, A handful? It sounds like you're just paying them maybe like 10 bucks a day. (laughs) I mean, if you pay in nickels, then yes, that is a handful of cash. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. What what are the benefits of these positions? Well, it really depends on what you do. If you are firing the weapons, then you are getting experience in the field. And if you are receiving the, uh, the weapons firing, you are... Wrapping this up quickly. But what if I said to you, well, every time you're working, you're getting paid because you're getting experience as a hiring manager. What would you say to that? I would say, hell yeah. Add it to but my resume. what do you get paid? I get paid. That's actually really inappropriate. And due to the confidentiality labor laws in this country, I'm not legally allowed to say. Can I guess? 80K a year? <laughs> it's up? It's higher than that. <laughs> Great. So, but right. So you get paid a lot and you just kind of. Times three. <laughs> Times three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on. You get paid 80 plus. So you get paid... Uh, Half a mil. No. <laughs> no, that's not right either. Sorry, I didn't finish math. It 80 wasn't times not... three is... No, but after... 240K a year. Yeah, but after taxes, it's half a mil. No. Yes. Because the government pays us taxes. Where where your taxes go to. That Right. Okay. Uh-huh. So this is all making sense. Yes. And you think that people putting their lives on the line shouldn't get paid anything. Well, if you do get paid and then, you know, you do your job, why do you need money? Because you're not going to... To eat, to live. What okay. If I want to take a vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see where you're going with this. But again... Um, I, ideal candidates, they can see our vision. I see. The ideal candidates are fine being taken advantage of. Yes. Got it. Totally. So what totally, are some completely. criteria for these candidates before they get this position? Um, Not particularly smart. Mm. Don't like reading. Can't argue. Mm. Are short. Easily manipulated. Yes. Right. Um, Maybe just puberty level. You want prepubescent children? Well, I mean, I mean, they are technically... That's also illegal. They are working the mandated amount of hours. We go on the same laws as child actors do. Who are... So, uh, child actors? Who yeah. are you hiring for this? We are hiring people to test out... Kids. Because they cannot be tried as adults. This is really... I can't even imagine what company this is. And we are a government on government contract. Okay. You cannot arrest a 16-year-old for detonating a missile. They're a child. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. So our hands are clean. (laughs) I don't think that's true. That is true. I I think I'm... And we... I don't even know a lot about law, and I know... I think there's a lot of things going on here that are not good. And we pay them according to reasonable rates within that area for cats and dogs on a film set. Okay. What advice do you have for those entering the workforce? You got to stop complaining. Okay. Uh, Seriously, there's it's give and take. You give your life, we take it. Right. They're not getting anything. That's give and take. They gave. We. They're supposed to take something now. Yes. 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 They what take? They take what? What are they taking? Sometimes shrapnel. Mackenzie. (laughs) Is that my name? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Keep Did going. you lie? Is no, that no, 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 no. I uh, just, yeah, keep going. So what advice do you have for a hiring manager? 
This I'd love to know. Um, if they have facial hair, too old. Um, that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> you could have. Oh, you mean they have to be? You mean they have to be children? Because anyone can have facial hair. Because legally, age. you cannot arrest and sentence to a life in prison a teenager. Why would your employees be going to prison for life? You need to show intent. So you cannot tell them why they're working there. You just assign them the task. Whose parents let their kids so do it's a, this? So it's a lesser manslaughter charge. Who lets their kids do this? You'd be surprised. I'm, I am surprised. You know, Mackenzie, I'm going to say it. I think you're a bad person. I, my hands are clean. Aside from the snot I just wiped off my face, <laughs> my hands are clean. Mackenzie, I have, you've got I a have, snot on our floors. I have you've, followed certain laws to my fullest capabilities. Are they self-written laws? They are, in a sense, are sort of... Made up. Made up, yeah. And I have done drugs in the office. I know. I can tell that. Uh-huh. It looks like you did drugs before you came in here today. That is true. All right. Mackenzie, thank you so much for being here. You know, I, I hope that maybe someone in who knows anything about legality of things is listening now to this so they can maybe help out some young child workers. We have lawyers who are currently senators, so sue us. I dare you. See okay. what happens. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Mackenzie, for being here. Bye, guys. Well, that was an experience was that it? I had. Yeah. And it's over, and I'm glad. Hell that yeah. Was that rhymed. Um, that was a hoot and a holler. Thank you all so much for being here today. We uh, love you all, appreciate you all. And also, I wanted to let you all know something very exciting, which is that Sarah and I mm-hmm. are going to be performing in the New York Comedy Festival. We are. We're going to be doing a live podcast episode technically, but there's also going to be more to it. There's going to be stand-up. There's going to be funniness. We're also going to have a guest on. Zachariah. Do you know Zachariah? I don't know why I'm asking as if you're going to respond. But What is Zachariah's last name? Zachariah Porter. Mm-hmm. And he is a TikTok, Instagram, YouTube sensation. He's so funny and a good friend of mine and he, he's a blast so he's going to be there he mm-hmm. uh, has a podcast as well uh, called Camp Counselors so mm-hmm. if you've heard of that podcast he's going to be there we're going to have such a great time we're going to meet everybody and it's going to be so fun and it's going to be great so if you're in New York or if you want to fly on in yeah. come see us it's on November yes <laughs> we are. I, I we will date. have the tickets linked below it's like November 8th through 11th maybe but it's in the ticket. The ticket yes. links will be uh, listed or linked. So go check it out and let us know if you're going to come see us because we can't wait to see you. Also, just for me personally, I may do stand-up shows in the area. <gasps> and if you come to them, Kendall will likely be in the audience because I'll stronger Ooh, now. I'll hold your hand. Yeah. Oh, just from the stage. <laughs> yeah. But no, buy tickets. They are linked below. We um, have a lot sold already, but you don't want to miss out on seeing us. Yeah. It's a, it's a small venue, which is super fun, but mm-hmm. uh, definitely keep that in mind. If you know you want to go, get your tickets now because they probably will sell out. I Yes. Um, anyways, in terms of the podcast we do called the BCC Club that yeah. you're listening to now, like it on all the places that you could like it and give a five oh, yeah. star review. And we're anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Music. Spotify. Make sure yeah. to like and subscribe. Write us five stars. Leave a review for this one. I want on YouTube for you guys to tell us your fun applying for a job story. Oh, yes. Oh, tell us your crazy hiring manager stories because yeah. we'd love to read those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. A wild, wild, wild the way the world works. Yeah. But we are appreciative of you being here and we adore you. And we've just hired you as our friends. Our friends. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great week. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.